Good morning students. Today I shall show you a program in Java practically using the NetBeans ID interface to make a simple interest calculator. The simple interest shall be calculated based on the formula that is principal into rate of interest into time divided by 100. Now before I show you the Java program, let me first minimize this notepad window. Now here is the interface design of the Java program. The Java program along with this interface design has been created inside a project and the name of the project is simple interest as I have shown it here with the help of this mouse cursor. Now this interface design consists of a form and the form is in the shape of a rectangular box as you can see it clearly and inside this form there are controls such as labels, text fields and buttons. There are four labels inside this form. The first label is for principal whose class name is JLabel1 as indicated at the top of the properties window. The second label is rate of interest okay, whose class name is JLabel2. The third label is time whose class name is JLabel3 and the fourth name is interest whose class name is JLabel4. Now there are four different text fields corresponding to these labels. The class name of the first text field is JTextField1, the class name of the second text field is JTextField2, the class name of the third text field is JTextField3 and the class name of the fourth text field is JTextField4. Now in addition to these labels and text fields there are two buttons. The first button bearing the text calculate has the class name J button 1 and the second button bearing the text cancel has the class name J button 2. Now let's try to understand the workflow of this interface design. At first the values for principal, rate of interest and time shall be supplied in their corresponding text fields and once the value gets supplied you should hit this calculate button now clicking this cal calculate button initiates an event which will generate a piece of java code and that piece of java code shall be executed to calculate the simple interest on the basis of this formula where the value of principal shall be supplied from the first, first text field the value of rate of interest shall be supplied from the second text field and the value of time shall be supplied from the third text field. And after that the value of this expression principal into rate of interest into time shall be calculated which will then get divided by 100 to produce the value of simple interest. And that value of simple interest should be stored in the fourth text field. Now let me show you how this is done. So click this calculate button. On clicking this calculate button, it will lead you to this method called J button one action performed, whose class name is J button one. Now inside the body of this method, here is the piece of Java code as I have highlighted. The first line declares four different variables principal, rate of interest, time and amount whose data type is float. That means these variables can accept only decimal values. And that's why as float is a data type for decimal values so for these variables I have specified the data type as float. Then in the next line I have started the try block. Now the set of codes which are within the try block shall be checked for errors by the compiler and if the compiler detects any error in any of the statement inside this try block that error shall be handled in the next block known as the catch block. So here is the catch block 
and inside the cache block there is one java statement which shows the message dialog to display the error now let's come to the try block again and enter inside the body of this try block the first line okay so this is the first line here the value of the first text field gets extracted using the get text method of the j text field one class now j text field one class belongs to this text field which is the first text field so the value of the first text field shall get extracted using the get text method of the z text uh, using the get text method of the z text field one class and then that value should be converted into the float type using the parse float method of the float class now why are we converting it to float this is because the value inside the first text field okay is of type string now for the string value to get converted into the float value I will use this parse float method of type float okay I will use this parse float method of the float class and then only I will supply the extracted value of that text field into the variable called principal the same thing shall be done with the second text field whose class name is j text field 2 the value of the second text field shall be extracted using the get text method of the j text field 2 class and then it shall be converted into the float using the far using the parse float method of the float class to be finally stored into the variable called rate of interest again the value from the third text field shall be extracted using the get text method of the j text field 3 class and then that value should be converted into the float okay that value should be converted into the floating type uh, into the floating point type by using the parse float method of the float class to be finally stored into the variable called time and once i have calculated the values for principal rate of interest and time i shall use this expression principal into rate of interest into time okay and then divide it by 100 to get the final value of the simple interest amount now note that this amount here indicates the simple interest amount now once i have calculated the simple interest amount whose value will be certainly a decimal value as amount has been declared of data type float now i shall use the value of that simple interest amount variable to be stored into the float text field which is having the class j text field 4 and for that i shall use the class j text field 4 and then call the set text method to store the value of the variable amount into the float text field but before storing the value of the variable called amount into the text field i have to convert that value from floating point type into string type this is because a text field a text field can accept only string value okay now that the value for this variable amount is of floating point type so that value should be converted into string value first to be stored into the text field so for that i shall use the two string method of the float class and then supply the argument as amount so z text field 4 dot set text uses the set text method of the j text field 4 class to store the value of the variable called amount into the fourth text field and for that that value should be converted into string first 
before it gets stored. So that is represented in this statement as ZX field 4 dot set text then within bracket float dot to string then we supply the argument amount. Now let me run this program. For running this program bring your mouse cursor over here to this run button and click on it. Now let me supply the value of principal as 10 the value of rate of interest as also 10 and the value of time as also 10 and now I shall click the calculate button. This shows the simple interest as 10.0 which has been calculated using this formula that is the value of principal which is 10 gets multiplied by the value of rate of interest which is also 10 which again gets multiplied by the value of time which is again 10 so 10 tens a hundred hundred tens a one thousand so one thousand when it gets divided by hundred it gives the value 10 but now that the variable amount is of data type float so it will convert that integer value 10 internally into the floating point value that is 10.0 as 10 and 10.0 denotes the same value which is 10 only difference is that 10 which uh, does not contain the decimal portion is the integer value and 10.0 which contains the decimal portion is a decimal value. Now the decimal value okay 10.0 shall be stored on this variable called amount and that decimal value will be converted into the string type because in the text field it accepts only string values. So as a result the string value which is 10.0 gets displayed in this text field so i hope this is clear how how i have calculated this simple interest based on the values of principal rate of interest and time now if we change the time to say 20 and then again click the calculate button the corresponding simple interest becomes 20 because 20 into 10 into 10 becomes 2000 2000 divided by 100 gives the simple interest as 20 so the simple interest is calculated in this way now the next thing that I'm going to show you is if you click the cancel button okay it ends the program and the form disappears this is because now let me go to this design mode now once you click this cancel button okay uh, now note that the class name for this cancel button is J button 2 and once you click this cancel button it leads you to the method called J button 2 action performed which belongs to the class J button 2 and inside the body of this method it executes the java statement system.exit0 where exit0 is the method of the class called system okay which stops the java program uh, once this uh, method gets executed and that has happened here when i click this cancel button it called this system.exit0 method to stop the java program and as a result the form also gets disappeared so as i click the run button and i click the cancel button the form gets disappeared as the java program has ended now i hope this is clear so that's the end of today's presentation